Good morning, everyone. Early afternoon almost. We'll give it another five minutes to let people roll in here. I was thinking about the inner justice to you. So far. Hello. All right, afternoon, everyone. It's now 12 o'clock, so I'm going to get started. Thanks for joining us today. Um, my name is John Gardaki. I am the Transit Principal Planner here at Mark C. I am the 5310 um, Program Manager. I'm joined with by Xander Fay here, who's our programming intern. We'll be the two people handling this um, call for applications for Section 5310. Again, this um, is being recorded. It will be um, on our Mark C page under Enhanced Mobility, where the link to the application will be um, later today. We'll go through the timeline of the application 
at the end, um, but the application will officially open on Monday. Slide. I'll let Xander uh, introduce 5310 and we'll begin. Okay, thank you, John. Um, so MORPSD provides the capital and operating grants for um, public transportation services. Um, in order to help meet the mobility needs of seniors and individuals with disabilities. Um, this program provides $1.6 million in federal grant funds for expenses related to equipment used in vehicles to transport older adults um, and individuals with disabilities and um, activities related to mobility management um, to help increase the mobility of those two groups. Um, and this can include public transportation agencies, human service agencies, um, and private providers of public transportation services. Um, and this helps to meet the need, these funds help meet the needs of seniors and individuals with disabilities uh, when public transportation is insufficient, inappropriate, um, or unavailable. And the um, larger goal of the 50, of Section 5310 program um, is to improve the mobility of seniors and individuals, sorry, individuals with disabilities. Um, this helps to meet the needs of the transit dependent um, and help programs um, exceed ADA requirements, um, improve access to fixed route transit services, um, and provide alternatives to public transportation. Um, and individuals with disabilities um, can be of any age and of any disability as defined by the federal government, um, including deafness or blindness, intellectual disabilities, orthopedic impairment, um, or any disability um, defined by the federal government. Um, and the service area for eligible applicants is primarily in the Columbus urbanized area. Um, anybody in Franklin or Delaware County um, is eligible to apply, including portions of Licking, um, Fairfield, and Union counties, including Canal Winchester, Reynoldsburg, um, and anywhere um, in Franklin or Delaware counties. Um, the Census Bureau will release new urbanized area definitions um, at the end of 2022 um, because of changes in the definition of rural or urban areas um, under the Biden administration. Um, so that may affect eligibility um, for projects in the 2023 cycle. But if you do have any questions about um, eligibility, please feel free to reach out to John or myself. Um, and we'll work with you to help answer those questions. So we have two types of eligible projects under Section 5310 um, congressional approval. 55% of our projects selected have to fall under what is called traditional. So these are your bread and butter vehicle purchases as well as equipment for vehicles. It might be wheelchair ramps, uh, lifts, securement devices, as well as transit related ITS systems. So if you need a software for a scheduling or dispatch lane one call system, as well as radios, um, camera systems. And also provides funding for mobility management programs. Uh, each county has their own mobility manager, and we do fund those programs historically through the 5310 fund. It also provides acquisition of transportation services under a contract or lease. That's what we um, refer to as purchase transportation. We do not fund any operating costs for um, providers to operate their own system. It's only purchase transportation services under a contract or lease. Um, preventative maintenance uh, to do maintenance on your um, 5310 or um, personal uh, um, vehicles that you use to transport or older adults or individuals with disabilities. And then also the purchase and installation of benches, shelters, and other passenger amenities that um, correlate to uh, the public transit service. The other category is our non traditional, which um, can make up 45%, uh, but no more than 45% of the total allocation of funding. Examples of this include travel training, teaching individuals how to get on to different types of public transportation networks, um, building accessible paths to a bus stop, 
This can include curb cuts, sidewalks, accessibility, um, pedestrian signals, or any other accessible features. What is not eligible are things such as um, ADA um, door buttons to open up doors. It has to be um, corresponding to um, a transit stop. So any anything that gets you to a transit stop. We can also provide um, funding for improving signage or wayfinding technology. And then there's also mobility management programs that fall under the non-traditional category. So some of our past projects we funded in the last round. Um, this round was unique to the 5310 program because it was funded through um, additional COVID funding through the CARES and um, CRISA and ARPA funds. <clears throat> so it was 100% federal. So we had um, approximately like 1.55 million to give out last year. This year's cycle is back to the normal 80% federal, 20% local. So an entity will have to provide a 20% match. But for the projects that we um, funded last cycle, there was a large portion that went to um, vehicles as well as purchase transportation services. Uh, we also provided mobility management and capitalized maintenance funding to Delaware County Transit. And um, right now we are going through the process of getting in the long, long line of vehicle procurements um, for the future. Next slide. So the federal funding stipulations, like I said, 80% federal, 20% local. The Mid Ohio Regional Planning Commission is uh, the designated recipient um, by authority of the governor of Ohio. Um, for the FTA urbanized area formula. That formula this year increased by about 25% due to the passage of the um, bipartisan infrastructure law. So we are looking at uh, $1.6 million um, this year as our allowable um, application fund. Um, so awardees will be sub recipients. All the funding will flow through um, MORPC. So for non-vehicle awards, the upper recipient incurs costs up front and then submits an invoice to MORPC to get reimbursed for that. Here internally, we process those invoices through the FTA system called TRAMS. Uh, we will then reimburse the sub recipient. <clears throat> we normally do either monthly or quarterly invoices based on um, your organization's needs. Um, like I said, 80% federal for local match sources. It can be either state or local appropriations, non-DOT federal funds, uh, dedicated tax revenues. If you have dedicated revenues for your organization, it can also be a private donation or revenue from human service contracts. If you have a Medicaid contract, things like that or net income generated from, from advertising sources. So all of our federal funding stipulations come with the federal funding guidance. And so we must comply with all um, FTA and DOT requirements. This includes an annual certification and assurances, making sure we comply with the Title VI program, as well as civil rights, um, equal employment opportunity, and disadvantaged business enterprise. So we'll go through the Title VI um, system here, just to let everyone know what is required on a, on a sub-recipient. We also have our accounting system, financial management and reporting that we do as an organization on the back end. Um, and we do require some reporting from um, sub-recipients that provide or request vehicles. Next. So once all the applications are sent in, um, Morpsy staff is responsible for reviewing and scoring the applications um, through some of the project selection criteria, including a description of the project, um, a demonstration of need, um, the capacity, the agency effectiveness, um, the coordination and outreach, um, the current vehicles and equipment inventory, 
um, the ability of the project to meet federal requirements, um, and also how the project meets coordinated plan goals, um, as well as the past performance. So Xander will go through the online application um, at the end of the presentation. It's the, the same application that we um, utilized in the last cycle, if you did apply um, for last year's cycle, but we will go through that and will also be available to assist um, anyone that needs assistance with that. So new for this year um, is a 5310 advisory committee. So in the past, Morsi had scored and ranked all of the projects and recommended a program of projects POP that we have to submit to our um, MORPC uh, Technical Assistance Committee and Transportation Policy Committee for approval on these um, state transportation improvement program. Um, so we've devised this advisory committee to be local um, local advocates of either older adults or individuals with disabilities who have the knowledge of what is the greatest need in our community. So we'll be inviting this advisory committee to review the Mark State staff scoring and then provide a list of projects to be funded under that POP. So we're taking the, um, the rankings outside and making it more equitable for the community. So there will be a member of our community um, advisory committee and one member from the transportation and, or technical advisory committee. There will be two members from each Delaware County and Franklin County, and then a private health advocate from one of the hospital um, systems that will sit on this advisory committee. Uh, our Title VI plan, these are the requirements that we must follow. Um, subrecipients will need to submit and have a signed Title VI assurance to ODOT annually and make sure that the non-discrimination language is included in that. Um, we'll go through that at the time of application. Uh, each subrecipient has to develop a policy statement signed by your, the head of your agency outlining your commitment to non-discrimination and in all your programs and activities and inform the public of their rights under Title VI. Each uh, vehicle that you have will have the um, Title VI policy inside the vehicle that is available for the public to see where they can, um, if they have a complaint, they can submit the complaint to. You have to designate a responsible point of contact to coordinate Title VI efforts, and then um, have attended some type of training on Title VI. Uh, there will be a Title VI complaint, which um, you can forward to any complaint to MORPC that will be going to the Federal Transit Administration through the, the federal process. And then we also collect and analyze demographic data on populations. And then uh, step seven is developing an implementation of public involvement plan, including steps to engage underserved populations, as well as limited efficient English proficiency populations, or LEP. So under the uh, Section 5310 circular, we do have to have a coordinated plan, and then our goals must be related to our coordinated plan. So in February of 2021, the Middle High Regional Planning Commission passed the Regional Mobility Plan, which is their first uh, region-wide coordinated plan. It includes a nine-county area, and there will be a map on the, the next page. Um, but each county continues to have their own goals, but there is also regional goals that we are trying to, to meet to improve accessibility for uh, low-income uh, seniors and individuals with disabilities. So you'll see the three goals there. Uh, Franklin and Delaware County uh, continue to have a, a combined goal um, strategy. The first goal is expand services for disadvantaged populations. Goal two is encourage flexible policies to improve transit accessibility. And then goal three is increasing awareness of the available programs and services. So this is the um, 
map of the Human Service Transportation Coordination. We're in Region 6 under ODOT. So that's the blue highlighted area. It includes Logan, Union, uh, Delaware, Licking, Franklin, Madison, Fayette, Pickway, and Fairfield counties. So obviously our plan goes outside of the urbanized area. Mark C is only the designated recipient for the urbanized area populations. So anyone within our region six that falls outside of the urbanized area is eligible for ODOT's rural 5310 program, and they can apply um, directly through ODOT. So the three regional goals we have uh, are maintain and improve a level of service, encourage stakeholder and public support for transit, and then improving awareness of transportation options. We um, went through a about a year and a half series of public engagement during COVID through each of these counties and, and came up with these goals that were all very similar to all of the counties here. So as part of uh, the requirement for funding, um, all applicants who um, have vehicles must do a semi-annual reporting requirements. The reporting periods um, run through January 1st through June 30th with a report due by July 31st. And then the second period is July 1st through December 31st with reports due January 31st. So if you are a subrecipient who has received vehicles in the past, <clears throat> that's the link to the vehicle monitoring report. That helps us maintain our transit asset management inventory and knowing when vehicles can be properly disposed of. If you purchase a vehicle off of the 5310 program, Morp C is a lien holder of that vehicle, um, so you cannot sell the vehicle until the end of the useful life, making sure that Morp C <clears throat> is aware of a disposition of vehicle. If you get rid of a vehicle before the end of its useful life, you do have to pay 20% back to um, the federal government of whatever that um, the appropriate value is at the time. So just a reminder to folks who have vehicles um, due to the global production um, delay, we are not going to be funding vehicles for this cycle. We are still awaiting vehicles from our um, 2020 round, and it's just not prudent to um, utilize funding that can be spent on other needed goals that can um, occur in the next year. We're not anticipating our 2020 um, one round of vehicles to possibly be delivered until 2025. So we'll be ordering all the vehicles off of 21, but for this next round, um, we will not be awarding vehicles. Uh, we do have technical assistance review or TARS. Um, this is a requirement that um, Mark C as the designated recipient will do. So we'll be randomly assigning subrecipients every three years to do a re review, making sure that you have Title VI plan in, in place, that the um, complaint form is, is viewable, as well as making sure semi-annual reporting is done if you um, have a vehicle. And then making sure that your program is still meeting the needs of uh, older adults and individuals with disabilities. If you have vehicles or purchase transportation, um, we, we expect the majority of those trips to be utilized by those populations. Not that you can't use the vehicles or the purchase transportation for other uses, it's just that the majority of, of those trips um, and equipment need to be used for those populations. <clears throat> Uh, once those visits are completed, we'll go through any shortcomings or deficiencies in, in the program and work with you to, to fix those. We'll also be updating our transit asset management plan this year. Um, it has a three year sunset, and so we'll need to um, look forward to the future. And that's why in the form stack, we do ask about your future um, vehicle needs. So that way we can forecast what might be needed in the future for additional rounds. Okay, so now we'll go through the application. Um, as John said, it is 
the same application as last year's 5310 round. Um, and we'll open here. So um, just a reminder that the application um, has to be fully completed and submitted by um, October 24th at 5 p.m. Um, and then at which time Morphe staff, we will um, go through and review with the applications for accuracy and scoring, um, where the phase 310 advisory committee will then um, start to recommend a program of projects that will be voted on by the Morphe Commission. Um, so to begin the application, um, you scroll down and hit start application, um, where you first step is just to enter agency information. So for example, if um, you're a local government, you'll select local government, um, enter in all the applicant inf um, information. Um, there is a save and resume later um, button on each page if you would like to keep um, just pause work and then come back later. Um, it is um, worth mentioning though that if you do submit um, attachments, um, they will not be saved if you hit save and resume later. Um, so it is important to um, wait until you're fully ready to submit um, to attach any attachments. Well, the save and resume later button works through Formstack as you get a link in, in your email. So it's important to uh, make sure you have your email in there that you want it to go to. You'll have to go back to your email and click on that link. So every time you hit save and resume later, you'll get a new link to go back to your saved application. And the second um, page is entering and describing the service area and the service area population, um, including trip designations, destinations, excuse me, um, outside of the service area. Um, and then as John mentioned, um, entering in the future capital needs to um, help um, Morpsey get an idea of what is needed in the future um, from 2023 to 2026. Um, and then the next part of the application is the project description um, and the agency's management capacity. Um, we will enter the project title, the start date, the end date, um, where the project is located, along with a brief description of the project, including the goals and objectives and the funding fulfillment, and, um, including how this will expand accessibility and mobility. Um, options for seniors and those um, individuals with disabilities, um, and then describing the vehicle and non-vehicle capital requests of the project. You can go scroll back up to the top real quick. Yeah. Um, so for the project start and end date, how the FTA normally awards um, grants is that the um, applicant can utilize funds for about two years. So if you have um, purchase transportation services. You can either do a one or two year program. Um, they don't like to see spending reach farther than than two years away. That's why we are not awarding vehicles because we cannot award vehicles within a two year um, or spend down vehicle you know, costs within two years. And then again, um, just asking if the transportation program is open to anyone um, that fits a certain set of criteria, and if the program is the only available um, program to clients of your agency. So then section three describes coordination efforts, um, how your agency coordinates with other agencies, including a brief description of those efforts. Um, and then I think you can enter up to five coordinated, coordinating agencies, um, including just the agency name, a brief description of the coordination efforts. And then if you hit, if you would like to add another agency, you can add up to five um, in this section. And then funding requests, um, just kind of a current total number, current inventory of vehicles, including the current number of 5310 vehicles in the vehicle inventory. Um, and then the total number of accessible vehicles and the percentage of um, accessible vehicles within the organization. Um, 
If you don't have vehicles, you can put zero in the um, if you only do like purchase transportation. And then the funding um, request and local, uh, excuse me, local mass certification. Um, entering and requested items, so purchase transportation, computer hardware, software, um, capitalized maintenance, mobility management, or just miscellaneous capital. Um, and then the total cost, oh, sorry, the total cost and the local share, and then a brief description of funding sources. And then again, if you would like to add another funding request, um, you can click yes, and then another section will pop up where you can enter those. If you have a question about what type of or what your funny requests ask for, please reach out to us. We're happy to assist to make sure you get in the right bucket. And then um, explaining how communication equipment or computer hardware or software can be utilized to benefit the agency. Um, including improvements in service, coordination, or reduction in cost. Um, if you are not requesting any computer or hardware software funding requests, you can just simply enter NA into this field. Um, continue on with the application um, to miscellaneous items. If you are requesting any miscellaneous items, this is where you can just explain those items that you're requesting and enter the total amount of funding that you require for those miscellaneous items. And Miscellaneous items could include things such as cameras or um, security equipment, things like that. And then capitalized maintenance. This section includes all expenses associated with the preventative maintenance of transit service related vehicles. Um, vehicles that are eligible for capitalized maintenance reimbursement are um, active 5310 vehicles um, that have been purchased through previous 5310 section rounds. Um, so that includes this section, the total cost of mechanics and bus, excuse me, bus washers, including the 20% 20, 20 local match, the 80% federal, and um, repairs and oil changes, fuel, um, tires, um, tire rotation repairs, and then um, the automatically calculated grand total will appear at the end um, once you've entered. Um, the other information above. And then the mobility management section um, provide um, the application just asks that you provide a work plan or general overview of current or planned mobility management um, programs, including how long it will take, um, how it fit in, fits in with the agency's transportation program, um, how it interacts with other agencies, and then just a quick summary of the person um, who is designated as the lead on these mobility management programs. Um, just a quick overview of their experience and education um, and how it's sufficient for the success of the project. Um, and then if you don't currently have any mobility management programs, um, you can discuss the minimum qualifications required and preferred qualifications desired for your ideal candidate to lead the project. Um, and then, of course, these don't apply. You can just simply enter NA into these fields. Um, and then the um, mobility management, um, total project hours, and the ideas. Um, just a quick brief overview of the number of hours that this person will be performing mobility management project activities and the um, estimated number of paid and unpaid leave hours for these projects. Um, for a 40 hour work week, the sum of the total project hours, paid leave hours, and unpaid leave hours um, should equal 2080. Um, and you can enter those into these fields um, down below. And then for applicants that also operate a transportation service, um, this is where you would enter that information, including the name of the supervisor of the transportation service and the responsibilities. Um, that that person has, um, if they're related to transportation, excuse me, transportation services that the mobility management project leader will also have. And the mobility management budget narrative, this is where you would enter a detailed budget narrative um, to justify those expenses um, for the mobility management programs. Um, you would enter that into this field and um, 
applicants are required to upload a completed eligible expenses worksheet as one of the last steps um, before submitting the application. I believe that is in the very last section of the application where you attach attachments before submitting. And then again, as John said earlier, um, Title VI data collection, um, the FTA requires that transit systems provide certain um, types of demographic information in order to determine the number of minority persons served in the transit area. And um, MORPSI, we've determined that it is necessary to collect this data um, in the form of transit clients served. Um, so applicants can answer the questions below. Um, and it's also important to note, um, do not report US, sentence, U.S. census percentages or passenger trips um, and to use the client database to determine the number of low income or minority clients. Um, so this can be an estimate if you don't have <laughs> the exact. That's OK. We're just looking for an estimate. Yes, and then you enter those numbers um, in these fields below. And then any additional details you may feel are necessary to add. You can um, use this field to explain um, how you calculated these numbers or calculated these estimates. And uh, again, a one page separate attachment is allowed if more space is needed. Um, you can upload this attachment at the end before you submit your application. Um, but also applicants um, are asked to provide responses to each of the questions below um, and describe the procedure and investigate in tracking Title VI complaints um, filed against the agency, um, describe the mechanism for dissem disseminating the information to the public, um, along with a quick summary of the outreach um, and involvement activities undertaken, um, any um, a list of any active lawsuits or complaints against um, your organization, um, alleging discrimination, um, and if there's any mechanism to ensure meaningful access to the benefits services information um, and any other portions of your organization um, to limited English um, proficient um, people um, and just explain how these services are being provided to um, people with limited English proficiency um, and any civil rights compliance reviews um, conducted by any other local, state, um, or federal agencies during the past three years. Um, and this includes the entire agency. And if it is, um, and if the applicant is a government entity, the county or the city. And then finally, this the final section of, of the application is where you would attach any um, supporting documentation and attachments. Um, again. Um, if you attach a document and choose to save and resume later, the attachments will not be saved. Um, so it is important to um, wait to attach any attachments until you are ready to submit the application. Um, and you can choose to upload files um, and for any of the required attachments or for any optional attachments, such as um, the capital plan or the miscellaneous capital project request, you can upload those. Um, files at the bottom of the page. Um, and the total size of the of the attachments cannot exceed 25 um, megabytes. And if you do have any problems, just contact John or myself um, and we'll be happy to assist you. And that is the end of the application. So once all of that is complete, you hit submit form right here and you should be good to go. Thank you, Xander. Um, so I just want to clarify the funding availability um, for this round. We have uh, 1.6 1. million available after the 10% administration costs. Um, the total application fund is uh, 1.5 uh, million available um, for those um, applications. Last year we did receive more um, requests than we had available funding for. I anticipate that to um, happen this year. Um, so you're more than welcome to apply for as much as you want. Um, if you have something that's more important than another thing, please make sure you note that in the notes so that way um, the advisory committee knows what is the most important thing for your agency. Again, this is an annual call, so we'll have another 
application round um, next fall. Next slide. So the, the timeline for this cycle, um, we announced this cycle on September 14th. We're having the workshop today. Uh, again, you can go on to the Enhanced Mobility webpage on the markc.org uh, website slash Enhanced Mobility. You'll find the application link as well as the recording of today's workshop. The call for applications slash projects opens on October 3rd, and all project applications will be due at 5 p.m. on October 24th. By the end of October, um, we'll have a draft uh, recipient list. And November 18th will be the um, TIP amendment uh, for our program of projects. Uh, the December Transportation Policy Committee and Commission will then vote on uh, including the program of projects in the uh, January Transportation Improvement Plan and will be submitted to ODOT for approval in January. Once ODOT approves our program on projects, they do submit that to the Federal Transit Administration. Uh, Columbus Urbanized Area falls into Region 5, which is located in Chicago. Once they have approved that, uh, myself and Xander internally will be submitting those um, grants into TRAMS for authorization and then drawdown of the funds um, can be awarded once uh, MORPC and the subrecipient sign, sign a contract. Uh, next slide. Um, so now I'm happy to take any questions uh, that you might have. You can either unmute yourself or uh, put your question in the chat box. We're happy to answer any, any questions. Hi, this is Amy from the city of Hilliard. Um, I just had a question about um, when you mentioned uh, for the purchase transportation that you can apply every one or two years. Yeah, can you go to the next slide? Yeah, I'm happy to take any questions by phone and email as well. Um, you can reach me um, on my mobile phone or our um, team's phone as well as email. Happy to answer those questions or go over a project that you're thinking about making sure it's eligible for, for funding before you begin your um, application. Um, I do have a couple questions. Is there a draft of the application questions available? Um, we don't have a um, PDF. Um, as soon as Monday hits around, we'll have the link of the application questions. You don't have to begin filling it out until you're ready. Um, we're giving about three weeks to ap um, apply there. If you have a current 5310 contract, are we eligible to apply for this round for either the same or a different project? Um, yes, we do um, fund subrecipients that have received past 5310 funding. Um, if you're asking for the same thing, purchase transportation or capitalized maintenance that you have and it's an extension, yes, we do um, fund, fund for that. Uh, we'll put the direct link for the application on the uh, website under Enhanced Mobility. That'll go up on Monday morning. Um, Amy, did you have a question? Yeah, sorry. Can you guys hear me? I can't hear. Is your sound off? I can just type it in the chat if oh. not. I can there, hear there you. There we go. Amy, sorry. Sorry. Okay. sorry. Sorry. It's my fault. No worries. Um, I just was wondering, um, you mentioned for purchase transportation about possibly applying every year or every two years. Um, is it required to apply every two years or is year by year okay or do you guys have a preference? Yeah, we don't have a preference. Um, generally what will happen is if you ask for two years of funding, if we have more applications and available funding, we generally We'll see if you can scale down your project for one year of funding. Um, so if that happens, you might get a call from me <laughs> to see if that's acceptable for you. 
If it's not a scalable project, just make sure you put that in your application. Okay. That and then sense. the um i think so <laughs> and then the other question is uh do we need um for the current inventory list do you enter city purchase vehicles there or is that only for 5310 purchase vehicles for which line item sorry um it said there was the page on the application for current inventory um, we don't we don't have any 5310 purchase vehicles, so I didn't know if we should put in what's already in our fleet for this program because we do own the vehicle for it, or if that was just for 5310. Um, you can put in that column for funded vehicles. You can use that vehicle in that column. Just put zero in the 5310 funded. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Amy. Um, we're listed as Canal Winchester for Human Services. Um, Anthony, I'll get with you to to fix that. Um, we'll work on that. Yep. Okay, I think I answered all of the questions in the chat box. Does anybody else have any questions they'd like to be answered while we're here? All right, perfect. Well, I'll let everyone have 15 minutes for lunch, but we greatly appreciate um, you reaching out for this workshop and we're excited to push this uh, funding out into the community. So uh, great, everyone have a great rest of your week. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, John. Thanks, Andrew. Thank you, guys. Thank you.